All right, so we're also doing an above knee amputation on our patient today on the right side, the X fix is on the left side. So I just wanna run through kind of the thought process of doing amputations, at least in the orthopedic world, and some instruments that you wanna pull out and things that you wanna think about. Um, the first thing is that we should probably have a sterile tourniquet because it's an above knee amputation and we would end up draping ourselves out if we did an unsterile tourniquet. So today we will probably do a sterile tourniquet. If the amputation has to go really high, we would not be able to do a tourniquet. And you need to keep that in mind as far as arteries and veins and being able to clamp those before you cut into them. Um, uh, we do have an amputation tray, but we don't use it in orthopedics because usually the amputation knife's dull and nobody wants to use it. So we do a dermatome blade um, and then I put it on a needle carrier and we basically just kind of guillotine the leg with a, a, a amputate, I mean, sorry, with a um, dermatome blade. Some other things to consider is that you want to make sure that we're protecting the arteries as best as we can. So we use Chandler's to basically wrap around whatever bone it is that we're amputating to protect the vessels that are underneath it. So they'll use two of these in combination when they're doing the, um, the cutting of the bone. And I don't have the saw yet, but we use an oscillating saw. And I'm going to have lost my blade, I'll find it somewhere. But um, we'll put the oscillating saw in here and they'll uh, use irrigation while we're cutting the bone so that the bone doesn't get too hot because if the bone gets too hot, then it can actually die. So we wanna make sure that we are uh, irrigating really well while they're sawing through the bone. Once they get the bone saw through, um, they, if we're not using a tourniquet, then they will actually um, use like medicine, medicine bombs and the bakies to go through the tissue and find the artery in the vein. And at the very least, they will clamp it. Sometimes they will go ahead and tie them, but a lot of times they just clamp them. And then we will cut the rest of the leg off. And then we will go through systematically and find the artery in the vein and even the nerve. Um, and we use, we use Alice's to grab them with and um, Collier's and tonsils. We'll use the, all three of these instruments to grab them with and we'll use a right angle. So that's why I have these out. And to tie them with, it depends on the doctor, um, but you want a large, a large um, whatever suture that they prefer to use. I opened a number one viper, which is a large um, in size of diameter of the suture. And then I also opened these 2-0 silk ties. These are smaller in size. So he'll use both of these in order to tie the artery in the vein. And typically they will tie them twice for each one to make sure that they, you know, if one suture fails, that the other one will hold. Um, another thing that you need is a bone hook. So once they get the bone cut, they'll use this in the proximal part of the bone to basically just lift it up and assist with cutting the rest of the leg off. Um, our packs come with uh, these buckets and we use a turn up, uh, turn upside down and this will hold the, the end of the leg up to help work with and prop it up a little bit better. We may also do a wound back because this is a traumatic amputation. We'll probably put a wound back on this patient, which I held in the corner. I didn't open it yet. But for traumatic amputations, we typically do not close them because they're swelling, they're probably, they could get infected because of all the, you know, dirt and debris that has gotten in there. So this will be an amputation with a wound back placement. That's it.